You're watching us live on the pulse of the nation, the best news analysis show in Ghana around this time. We're coming to you live uh, from our studios in Accra. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Shortly, we'll be looking at just a few hours to the end of the vote transfer exercise. Tamale remains under heavy security threat. And we'll be getting you all the updates. Also, the PPP injunction application against the payment of filing fees has been denied. Well, we'll tell you the arguments that went into this and when the EC will begin collecting the fees. Also in the next half hour, the Black Stars will be in action against Uganda at the Tamale Sports Stadium in a 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifier. What are the chances of Ghana? We'll bring you the update and take you live to the venue, Ghana versus Uganda. So stick and stay with us. We'll bring you all the details shortly. start with an Accra High Court which has given the Electoral Commission clearance to receive filing fees from presidential and parliamentary nominees. The Progressive People's Party filed an application for injunction praying the court restrains the EC from receiving the said amount being charged and says it was capricious and arbitrary use of power. The judge in his ruling said the application fails but however deferred reasons to a letter a latter date joseph akablay was in court for joy news so the ppp's application for an injunction has been denied by the high court presided over by justice daniel mensa now today in court the ppp's legal team led by denis of Oswapia, argued that a court should grant the injunction because they were of the view that pndc law 284 requires that the electoral commission was supposed to state the specific amount of 10,000 cities and 50,000 cities as the parliamentary and presidential nominee fee respectively in the CI 94 that was approved by parliament. They argued that this was not stated in the said provision. They were therefore of the view that the injunction should be granted. They also further stated that if the court fails to grant the injunction, the Progressive People's Party was going to suffer irreparable damage. And by irreparable damage, Dennis Appiah argued that he meant if the PPP fails to provide a set amount, they will be prevented from contesting in this year's post for both presidential and parliamentary elections. So he therefore argued that the court should grant the injunction. However, the lawyer for the EC, Thaddeus Sorry, disagreed. He argued that the law that was being quoted by the Progressive Post Party provided that the EC determines the said amount, which the EC has determined, even though they have not stated explicitly the amount to be 10000 and 50,000 respectively. He also stated that if the PPP cannot pay the said funds, they should apply for an injunction restraining the EC from receiving the said amount from the Progressive People's Party and not from the other all the other parties. But he says in the application, the PPP was seeking a declaration that prevented the EC from taking the amount from all other parties. He also argued further that even the said amount that the PPP was arguing they couldn't fund, the PPP had paid the said amount for their presidential candidate, Dr. Papa Kwesindum. But the PPP lawyer, Dennis Ofoswapia, however, disagreed. He pointed out that they were in court to get an injunction to prevent the EC from receiving 2.8 million cities, which was for their presidential candidate as well as all other parliamentary candidates. The said amount we are presented to the EC was for the presidential candidate and not for all the parliamentary candidates. Also, he stated that the injunction was directed at the EC from receiving the said amount and not at the PPP from presenting the said amount. But then the Justice Mensa in his ruling said the application for injunction fails to meet the requirement and he deferred his reasons to a later date. Now, after proceedings, Joy News caught up with policy advisor of the Progressive First Party, Kofi Asamoah and he said they are not disappointed in the ruling by the High Court. What the court has dismissed today is application for injunction so that uh, we were asking the court that nobody should pay the fee until the final determination of the main substantive suit. What he says is that that application has failed and that means that we should go look for the money and go and pay the filing fees. The substantive matter he fixed for 
uh, 11th of October for us to meet. And, and then we will go into the matter whether the EC CI-74 or CNNT-4 provides in accordance with PNDC Law 284. So the matter is not ended. What has happened today is that even if you go and pay, Progressive People's Party, you go and pay, this court has the capacity to take your money back with interest as the counsel for EC submitted. So we've just, as a matter of case, uh, released the hands of the Electoral Commission to collect its filing fees so that the process can move on. And the matter that we brought, that the fee that is being charged is not backed by law, will be determined subsequently. So that is I, all there is. in this ruling? No, we can't be disappointed in that because the court has spoken. We came to court for the matter to be determined. The court has determined it. This is part one. Part two will follow. So the court will, at a later date, have to hear the substantive suit as to whether the EC acted in consonance with the law when he decided to charge 10,000 cities, 50,000 cities as the amount for parliamentary candidates as well as presidential candidates. As it stands, the injunction application has been denied. Joseph Akable, Join News, Accra. Joining me on phone is Eric Jakpasu, uh, the uh, head of communications for the Electoral Commission. Good evening to you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Jakpasu. And I think yeah. congratulating you will be in order, right? Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon uh, to you. We we'll, we'll accept the congratulations, but uh, it's, about, it's, about, it's about the system and it's about the process. So what does this ruling mean for the Electoral Commission? Thank you very much. All that it means is that um, um, now we, we can proceed with what um, we had to we had to suspend um, because of the courses. You know, we had two days for the receipt and acceptance of the nomination, but because um, the issue of the filing fee was not determined, there was no way we could have accepted the nominations. We have received all the submissions. We have gone through them. All that is left is for us to um, receive the filing fees from the aspirants, after which we'll be in a position to determine who actually qualifies to stand as a candidate in both the presidential and parliamentary elections. So the ruling means that the way it's opened, we can go ahead now and then receive the, the filing fee and then conclude the nomination and then proceed with what is left to be done. Right. So we know the PPP has already settled their bill. So what what date are you setting aside for the other people who have filed already to come pay their filing fees? Thank you very much for this very grand opportunity. By Monday, 12 midday, by 12 midday Monday, we expect all aspirants who have submitted their nomination form to um, go to their constituencies. That is in the case of the parliamentary elections then for the presidential elections to come to the head office of the Electoral Commission with their filing fees in bankers' draft for us to conclude the process. Well, many thanks to you. Eric Jakpaso is the head of communications at the Electoral Commission. Now, with 60 days to the general elections here in Ghana, some voters in the Bansama constituency in the Ashanti region say... Education, health, and good sanitation policies will determine the vote for who represents them in Parliament in 2017. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin is our correspondent, and he's been following up on the key issues raised by these constituents and has come through with this report. I, I am currently at Bantima constituency, one of the strongholds of the MPP in the Ashanti region. The party has won this particular seat for so many years, and this time around the NDC are saying they are going to do their best. Well, I will be speaking to some residents here to find out exactly what they are going to consider to cast their vote for a particular candidate. I mean, we will look at the basis, the, whether they are going to consider education, whether they will consider infrastructure development, whether they are going to consider employment to cast their vote for a particular candidate. Candidate. And I'll be speaking to a few of them and we'll find out exactly what are these factors that they are going to consider in this particular election. Please tell me your name and on what basis would you cast your vote for this year's election? I mean, uh, uh, the parliamentary. Yes. My name is Daniel J. Mensa. I've been, I've been staying in this constituency for a very long time. Since we switch to uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, democratic. 
voting for a particular party will base on uh, the hard work of the uh, parliamentary candidates. And you know, that my constituency has been stronghold of the MPP. There's nothing that's going to change anybody here's mind that is going to vote for um, other party. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, what I would say is uh, um, voting for different party with a subset of uh, MPP is very, going very hard. So, what would you consider? So many factors. Mention them. Can you mention them for me? Yeah, one, education, health, um, unemployment, uh, so many. Well, that will lead one may consider to, what do you call it, uh, vote for MPP. So you think you don't have these things in this particular constituency? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking at uh, looking around Bantumok constituency, there are so many schools here, government schools, and uh, when you go there, if you can take that opportunity to go to the uh, schools around this constituency, you may see that the population during uh, MPP regime, and now the population is declining, and that will consider one to uh, I mean. Not voting for the uh, uh, certain president. Um, the reason why I vote for my candidate is about uh, education. Because in Ghana, by this time, everybody needs to educate his child. So if we don't have uh, some education, there is nothing he can do. So that's why I try to vote for my candidate. Well, I vote for Ata. Of at, uh, the MPP. Why, why, why would you vote for a particular candidate? Tell us the reasons why you vote for a particular candidate. The reason I will vote for a particular candidate is that I will look, uh, I will see what the, the person can do for us before I can vote for him. So what, what would you like the person to do? Oh, I would like him to, you know, as for this area, we need so many facilities, such as schools. Uh, hospital, though we are having a confinement hospital, but it's not enough. Five years now. Five years. And you vote here? Yeah, I vote here. But to my constituency. But to my constituency. What are some of the challenges that you go through? Okay, one thing is that we are living here. In the morning, they will see that there are public toilets around this place. Instead of them to do it in the evening, in the morning that we are working, you will see that they are using those can that car they used to take the toilet. So the air will do something you can't even believe where and the boiler too now if, if you look at where the houses are it's almost near to the boiler and the toilet so we suggest that it's do something better amount so, so on based on what issues would you vote for a particular candidate for us to be happy so that nobody in this community or area to fall sick. Because all these things that we are believing in, you know, it's causing even cancer to we the people living around here. So what they are saying is that any of the candidates who will be able to resolve this challenge for you, you would vote for him? Yes, that's our main problem here. If anybody can do something about it to remove that public toilet and the refuge down from here, we vote for that person. What is your next concern? Okay, our next concern about okay, one thing is that there are a lot of youth living here. Some are not working. So it a lead to robbery. When you are working here around twelve, you see that there are people here they want to take your phone and those can from your pocket. So we suggest that they should do something for the youth. For them to get something better to work. To create an employment for them? Yes.
so that nobody will envy somebody what they are doing. That would be better for the youth. But if I'm just saying, now me so Obama candidate say, eh, yem pesu ya so with me a boy, eh, wo nima ebebe on. For example, say be a who be school, kwa ne be a who enter school be. Now we have so we be do when him. And now say ya kwa in obit me a boy, eh. And now say get funny, ni mani ma obit me a boy, ya e boy em pesu ya so. Matu abana mi uhu. Improvements be a was sad ni mani mo enke candidate on the the boy. Inti a few members just say. Men to our candidates, but to our president, can this the men to our president? Because Maxwa, we whom we be a, we make the boy. We only have any we pay. We make our children cry. Four years time, so near but to our banana, no maba. No one no more much is up and down. And then I'm one me. Me don't me a year at all. I'm a young man. In the candidate there, men to our mobile, but to our president. Sing. I nature and I can see. Nature, I may tell Swami. I say, the power woman, Peswasson. That's I say, my family best to arm, I was semi Benya, eh, you can say, eh, say, you know, or much say, me to Abama, the woman, Peswasson. I mean, my family, I'm an uncle school, my book, papa, my bread, my swaffles are quite chins, and they are remember, me, my own money, papa. Me and I'm sure almost a half in Banner Baby School. I was a man who made it here. Deca Crano. I mind say, Sanio Menin and I will chum. The only person I saw so bad. Or Babua, Emma Sanio Menin and I, Emma Menso Menua told me. And until I'm a person, I'm a two aban, and my dear woman person. Hello, my name is Afrani, and uh, I go here in Bantu. I've lived here all my life. Uh, the challenges are very, uh, just a few that I know that will come. If they will be able to solve that issue, I think it will come. Our road and our market here is not good at all. The ladies are always selling the street. Look at the fruit that they are selling. They don't have a particular place that they are selling all this fruit. And it's a, a, a food that people are also consuming. They have hazard and everything involved. That's my first point. We need a market. And if anyone will come and provide the market for a woman, I think it will reduce a little bit of the income that we the men spend on our ladies. Because they also contribute a lot in the family. So if they get a place that they can do their business, I think it will happen. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that our school here is Bantam. Honestly speaking, it's not good at all. It's so close to the, to the, to the main street from here to Bantam, before Jansen to Bantam. And there is no walk. Always roaming about, and they are always making noise outside here. Those who are selling products, advertising their products and things like that, are always making noise with these speakers, louder who speakers, disturbing the public peace. That's also an issue that we discuss. I don't know. So you would vote? You, would, I mean, you would vote? You would vote based on? Uh, I can't be Problem. That's the first issue here. I will only vote for someone who will build a very big market for here in Bantman because it's supposed to be in uh, risk But there, the, as you can see, they are selling the dirty places. Our food, our health is every woman being in this life. Your health is most important part of everything that you do. Even becoming rich or poor, your health is the most important part. And what you are consuming too is also about your health. So if they will have a market, a very good market. This is actually where the women are selling their farm produce and one of the residents raised a concern about this particular market. I mean the selling uh, by the street isn't good and anything can happen here. He is saying that they need someone who can actually address the issue of this market and they've also mentioned uh, health facility education road infrastructure among others that they want someone who would come and address them for them uh, my name is mahmoud mohammed nuruddin and i am here at the bantama market in kumasi So that was Hashmi Mohammed speaking to some constituents. Now, the Ghana Police Service says its decision to suspend motor checks is not politically motivated. They're appealing to the general public, especially politicians, to refrain from placing such 
interpretations to their directive. Director of Administration, COP Patrick Ninson, made this call at a media briefing in Accra today. The day manning of checkpoint has been suspended. It is apparent from the foregoing that suspending one operational strategy or the other is not a new thing, and that it is done with the sole purpose of improving service to the people we serve. Therefore, reviewing operational strategies is not influenced by any extraneous factors, such as politics, as is being peddled by some members of the public. The import of the administrative directive issued by the police administration has been woefully misconstrued by a section of the public. No wonder it was not meant for them. It must be stated categorically that MTTD personnel have not been withdrawn from the roads and the cities. Motor check is a police operational activity undertaken only by the MTTD personnel that focuses on checking the documentation of vehicles, documentation of drivers, and the state and condition of vehicles. The police administration's instruction, therefore, is to relax the deployment of the MTTD personnel purposely for this documentation and vehicle conditions check. Officers will duly be deployed on the roads and the cities to inspect vehicles against the commission of crimes and offenses like transportation of arms and ammunition, transportation of trafficking, transportation and trafficking of drugs, and perpetration of robbery and other violent crimes on the highways. Officers will arrest all persons who commit motor traffic offenses in their presence. In fact, motor offenses are not decriminalized. They, are, they still remain offenses and people who breach the provisions of the Road Traffic Regulations 2012 LI-21A0 will be dealt with accordingly. The directive as issued by the police administration is not about police ignoring the enforcement of the motor traffic regulations. Police opening the flag gate for the committing of motor traffic offenses. Presenting any political party with any opportunity to win or lose any competition as is being erroneously peddled. Police participation in politics. Police condoning acts of criminality by drivers and road users. People are therefore advised to desist from deliberately distorting and misrepresenting the directive for their own interest. The police further entreat politicians to eschew conscious distortions of their effort for any political gains because it is not 